Hey, Starsky, are you gonna drive? Hit it! Stars! Tell me uh, how you came to get the part for the back. When I was a young, hungry actor in New York, it was about 1970, 71, 72, and um, I did a film called Across 110th Street that was directed by Barry Shear, and it was with Tony Francioso and Anthony Quinn, and it was a real action film set in Harlem about some guys that robbed a numbers bank. Um, and I knew I had to go to Los Angeles in order to, you know, to fulfill my dreams about doing a lot of television or more films. So I went to New to Los Angeles, and um, my agent got a call from from a producer, I believe Aaron Spelling, and um, Barry Shear was directing the pilot for Starsky and Hutch, and he suggested me for the role. And I didn't have to read for it anything. I just came in and. Um, so the role was mine because it was just a one scene and they just wanted some authentic kind of character actor, a street guy called Huggy Bear. And uh, we had a great relationship in terms of with Starsky and Hutch in, in that scene. And, and I didn't know, but they had ideas that if it, that if that scene worked, that um, I would be part of the formula that was a hopefully eventually make Starsky and Hutch a success. And, uh, and it worked out. So where did the name Huggy Bear come from? It's quite memorable. It's quite unique. Where did it come from? Well, it was a unique name, but you know, as an actor, I just said, hey, you know, the role Huggy Bear, it sounded cool to me because as a character actor, I was used to being called, you know, called all kinds of different names in terms of the stuff that I did. But, uh, and I never thought, you know, when I thought about it, well, Huggy Bear maybe should have been somebody of a different stature or something. I was this skinny, skinny young actor. And, uh, but I sort of made the role mine because I just accepted the fact that, you know, he was who he was. But William Blinn created the series um, and wrote the, the pilot. Um, he was driving from San Francisco, he, he said in a documentary, and he heard a late night DJ who was called Huggy Bear, and, and he just thought it was a fascinating name, and he found a character that he could put it on. Okay, so who's your favorite character in the show, Starsky or Hutch? <laughs> Me, <laughs> my favorite character was Huggy Bear. You know, they say, you know, because when I got the scripts, a lot of times I had one scene in it, and sometimes I would just throw out the other pages and concentrate on my scene. The show was definitely starring David Soul and Paul Michael Glazer, and, um, and they were, you know, they carried the show, they were unique, and, um, and they made my job real easy because I just came in, gave some information, I had a little interaction with them, and um, but it was sort of a welcome, a welcome respite from from all of this action that was going on, and they would come to Huggy's place, and it would be a little bit lighter, and and it, it was sort of a welcome thing for the audience also. But I, I think uh, you know both David and Paul were really very very special, and they had a special relationship, you know, in terms of three working actors, or, as well as Bernie Hamilton as, as Captain Doby, that we really hung together and really, you know, looked out for each other and um, particularly tried to do whatever I could as an actor and as Huggy Bear to, you know, to support, you know, what they were trying to do and, and it turned out to be a winning, a winning formula. In strict terms, your character was a bit, it was a small role within the show, so why do you think you've had so much impact 
throughout the world. Everybody knows your face. Everybody knows your name. I have no idea. The magic and the power of television and the power of memory and the fact that we had a winning formula and each character had carried his own weight, but, and sometimes less is more. And I wasn't on camera that much, but there must have been something, and I think it's more about the humanity of the character, I think. Every man sort of kind of identified with this guy who sort of walked on the edge of, you know, of being, maybe he was a baddie, maybe he was a goodie, but he was certainly someone who had feelings. And I think the feelings of the character, and how he feels and how he cares about whatever he's doing and he was a survivor and I think people identify with the fact that Huggy was a survivor and he used humor and his wiles in order to um, to survive in, in the world of, of Starsky and Hutch. So how would you rate the show's success in the US and the rest of the world during its heyday? We had, I had no time and we had no time to think about you know, oh, we knew that we were really up there in the ratings and, uh, and we had such a demanding schedule. And for me personally, I didn't know the impact that much on, on, on what was going on around the world until after the show was over. And I got to travel a little bit and see, you know, how popular the show was and in particular and how people had really taken to my character. Because maybe if I did, I would ask for more money or something. <laughs> But I was just very, very happy to, to be working and to be working with, you know, with the people that I worked with and, uh, and, and the time. Timing was everything. And then certainly had a, you know, the power of television and memory had such a lasting, a lasting residual love fest with, with the audience that, um, that still goes on today and, um, and is quite special and, and, and touching. So you must have met some fascinating people, some stars and some incredible celebrities. <laughs> well, you know, it was really interesting because there were so many people who, who guest starred on the show who went on to other things. And, um, I don't even remember some of the names, but, but you know, it was a time in the 70s there when a lot of people in Hollywood were just making transitions from television to film. Or, and um, so we had sort of a who's who's list because when you have a hit show and you have a lot of actors who, you know, if they had good casting, they found good people. And so a lot of the people that I met, you know, through my years in the business, um, you know, we're all peers, you know, and we all, we all are trying to do a, do a good job and, um, and some of us get more famous or, you know, after the fact or even during, but it's, you know, you know, I just I don't look at it as too much as a fan, but I was a fan of a lot of people I worked with, particularly when I worked with um, Tony Francis who you know, across from 10th Street and uh, across Anthony Quinn and, and some of the other people I've had the honor to work with. And, and a lot of people came to Starsky and Hutch and sometimes they said, you know what, I was in one of those episodes and, and we have a laugh and, um, and uh, we bring back some nice memories. So would you do it all again? Of course, you know, I mean, uh, I'm a working actor and you're only as good as your last job and will continue and I've been very blessed to have 40-something uh, years in the business and out of that 40-something years, uh, four years was devoted to the active production of Starsky and Hutch, but it has also been the most powerful impact in terms of audience uh, exposure, so I have, um, you know, a decent legacy, so to speak, and uh, yeah, I mean, I'm an actor, and I would look for opportunities to 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 do what I do. So, did you ever get tired of being associated with Huggy Bear? Oh, boy, that's a that's a tough one. You know, I, I believe that you know, the the key to some of the things that I feel are, are big qualities in, in people. Um, that embrace their legacy and embrace, you know, what the audience embraces you know, in terms of what you gave them. And I think uh, certainly we gave them some special memories. And uh, as I traveled the world, and particularly in the UK, um, I found a lot of people who grew up watching the show. And um, and when they get a chance to express their gratitude and, and, and pleasure in what we did, it's very hard to, to be cynical about it. So Antonio, do you like playing games yourself? Well, I like, 
I like playing games, but I'm, I'm really not that good at it, and I'm such a competitor that um, until I get you know my hand and eye coordination down, um, <clears throat> I'll take it real slow. But my son plays, my daughter plays, and everybody I know, you know, who's into computers and, and into games, are all looking forward to the Starsky Nudge game because you know they know my involvement and in, um, in the series, and uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing how how Huggy interacts in the game and you know and, and how he helps move the game along and all that. So it's exciting for me from that aspect, and um, you know, so it's uh, and then. You know, the fact that within the game you can also you can be driving the car and then someone else can be shooting so you can either do it yourself or you can have a, a buddy you know, or mate work with you at the game and so I think probably I'll be the shooter because you know, I think I think I could do that a little bit better than than working the uh, than working the car because I'm I probably crash into everything but it's exciting I'm just anticipation is you know is, is, is real high in terms of you know the people that I meet who, who can't wait to see you know what's what's been done with Starsky Hodge in the video game. Okay, so uh, I believe you've got a, a music career now. You're trying to record some some music. What's going on with, with your life now? Oh boy, you know I'm always trying to break break sort of new grounds and uh, and combine a '70s feel because I love the '70s music and and mixing it with some young contemporary artist and, and feel. So I have a uh, record company called Bump It, and we're on bumpit.com, B-U-M-P-I-T.com, and, and so I promote my music through that, and I'm also working on some singles, and I'm touring the UK with uh, the Blues Brothers, where I get to sing and uh, before an audience, and actually I wait with David Soul and um, in a play a couple of years ago in, in Brixton in the UK and uh, and he encouraged me to sing and we did a concert after the show and uh, and it really worked out well so I kind of all my um, live performance you know um, yeah, taking those chances because David encouraged me to do it so it's been great and I, I just have a, a wonderful time with, with music today I was, was a little bit afraid of it and um, because it had to do with math and I wasn't so good at math and all that other stuff. But now it's like a, a lot of fun and um, and I continue to try to perfect my music and uh, working on an album, a CD, because the album's in the now. And, uh, and working in the studio is really exciting. It's a whole another, another avenue for me that I, that I like and hopefully um, so far people like what I'm doing. So do you still see Paul and David on a regular basis? What are they doing? What's going on now? Oh, yeah, I mean, of course, uh, David lives in London, and um, I see him all the time. And uh, in fact, I worked with him you know, a couple of years ago, and we're just supportive of each other. And uh, you know, we, we have something that was really special, and you know, we may not get together that much, but, uh, but over the years, when we do meet or see each other, or or think fondly of each other. It's 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 always been good, and all this attention around Starsky and Hutch. We've been asked to do a number of stories and documentaries about what it was like and all that. And uh, and um, you know, we always are supportive of each other's careers and lives and, and avenues that that we've traveled. Um, Paul came over for the play when we worked with David a couple of years ago for the opening, and we had a little mini reunion. It was really special. And um, life goes on. So one final question, I'll tell you. Um, your character with, when you bear was streetwise, it was cool. But do you think if you'd actually got into trouble, got into a fight, you would have won or would you, you would have got his killed? You know, I think the, the whole survival aspect of, of Huggy Bear was that if he needed to run, he would have ran. If he knew he thought he could handle himself, he would have handled himself. He was a good decision maker, and that's why he was a survivor. Progress.
Suspect in blue sedan, traveling east on 4th Street. In some kind of hurry, punk? It seems like this punk was just stealing cars. For who? He wasn't saying. Maybe a visit to the courthouse will help him remember. Something big was going down at the Bay City Bank. After hours withdrawal of other people's bread. Okay, read him his rights, Hutch. Anything you might want to say, loser? I ain't saying nothing to you cops. I know what happens to squealers. While Starsky wrapped up the business of arresting the suspect, Hutch spotted the van. It had a fresh paint job, and it was bad. Something about that paint job told our heroes that their troubles were just beginning. Now Starsky and Hutch were getting real hungry for their next slice of action. And they didn't have long to wait. Zebra 3, there's a 211 in progress at the gas and go on 7th. Get your butts down there now. Another paint job? Where'd the car come from, punk? Another badly painted set of wheels and another crime. The clues had to be connected. But this time, our two cops get lucky. The driver squeals a name. He says he got the car from a guy named Little Louie. Whoever that was, his days were numbered. Starsky and Hutch had only half a name. So they came to their number one cat for help. Hey, Hug. Know any Louis in the chop shop biz? Yeah, check this out. He's a real shifty dude. Little Louis Abgar. The cat moves a lot of painted wheels from his joint downtown. All right, all right. Don't shoot. I'm clean. What's with the cars, Louis? Been to any gas stations lately? After running like a scared rabbit, Little Louis is ready to talk. Figures he can save his hide by squealing to the cops. But man, he's so scared he's not saying nothing until he's safe from the dude he's gonna rat on. Looks like Starsky and Hutch have a new job. Babysitting one big squealer. So now our guys in the striped tomato had to escort little Louie's car all the way to the safe pad. And some of Carlton Breezy's boys aren't so happy to see little Louie get there in one piece. If you dig what I mean. Some house, man. You said you wanted safe? Well, this is safe. Now, what's on your mind? Just like the rat that he is, little Louie is only thinking of his own neck. So he drops the name, Carlton Breezy. Says the guy is in the auto body business, runs a new auto repair. Man, that cat's a bad wind blowing. Just how bad? Starsky and Hutch would soon find out. So this Carlton Breezy used the new auto repair as a front. All nice and legit. Sweet deal. Except this time, Starsky and Hutch are waiting to pounce. You ain't got nothing on me. The cash is mine. Can it, Breezy? You're nailed. That Breezy wiggles like a worm on a hook. But the pile of bucks in the trunk was all Starsky and Hutch needed to put him away for good. Seems like Little Breezy was nothing but a load of hot air after all. Bay City! Normally a busy and dangerous place. Perfect for keeping two detectives jumping who like to play the game their own way. Now Starsky likes his burgers, and anytime things get quiet, he's looking to eat. Sure you don't want one, Hutch? But today, they sure didn't stay quiet for long. As our main men relax with Breezy behind bars, they share a drink and shoot the breeze with yours truly. So, Huggy, you ever heard of this Breezy? Oh, not on my beat, man. He's a new name to me. Let's hope he sings some more new names, eh, Huggy? Hey, excuse me, gentlemen. I got some important business 
right over here. Downtown, things were getting hot at the pork factory. And we ain't talking sweet and sour here. This guy's a real lowlife by the name of Paolo. Calls himself the pig. So this little piggy decides to help himself to a slice of Breezy's action while Breezy is in lockdown. That biker found out that three wheels just ain't enough to evade Zebra 3. Out for a joyride, punk? There was no joy in what Starsky had to say to this guy. Especially when he wisecracks about his boss, the pig. Starsky and Hus didn't know any pig, but they sure could smell something was cooking. Looks like Starsky and Hutch need some help finding the pig. So they come to the hugster. Pig? You mean that dude Paolo the pig? No, nah, man. But I do know about his shady money man, Eddie Swan. He hangs out down at Luigi's every day. I guess you'll find him there. Starsky, those are Breezy's guys. Lunch is over for Eddie. Looks like a nice drive to see Breezy for him. See, just like the little rat that he is, Swan figures he can save his own neck by being a snitch. Yeah, he's only gonna talk if he and his little bambinos are safely off the street. Okay, Eddie, you tell us what you know and we'll organize a nice little vacation for everyone. Now talk! Eddie sang to our guys about the pig's plan to take out one of Breezy's joints. He wasn't sure which one, but he gave our guys enough to put the pig right in the frame. So the team are playing babysitters again. But this time, they need to be a little incognito. Nothing better than red to get attention. So they decide to use Hutch's wheels instead. There goes the Eddie Swan gang, safe and sound. Now Starsky and Hutch had to be on their toes. The $64,000 question was, which one of Breezy's joints would be hit when? Place your bets, gentlemen. Nah, lady. We're just cashing in. All of it. Just put the bread in the bag. Nice and easy. Hey! Put me down! Let's get out of here! Looks like Hutch's lady is being taken for a ride. It's her, Starsky. This is Tammy's scarf. Those creeps have taken her. Yeah, but where'd she go? Someone's making fools out of us, my friend. Our guys had seized the money, but Hutch's little lady was gone. Now both sides have aces to play. The pig wants his bread, and Hutch wants his lady back. Looks like a little trade might be the order of the day. That creep Palo set up Tammy as bait in a little game of cat and mouse. Now there's no time to lose, or Tammy's on a one-way trip to hell. Shame, such a pretty face. You freak! I've got your girl, Hutch. I want my money, you hear? Now listen carefully, or she gets minced. Are you okay, Tammy? I think so. They saved the little lady, but surprise, surprise, the pig was nowhere to be found. Hutch arranged a ride home for Tammy, while Starsky combed the joint for something that might lead them to the pig. Starsky searched the warehouse and turned up nothing but pork. Lots of it. They decided to split back to the precinct. But one of the piglets was still hiding. He figured his best chance was to sneak away real quiet-like. Hey, what's that? Looks like one of the pig's guys. Wonder where he's going. Back to the sty? So they decide to follow this little piglet all the way home. So now, Paolo the pig was headed for his own private pen. And boy, did he go down squealing. Nothing's gonna stick, you hear me? And when I'm out, it's gonna be payback time. Hey Hutch, I do believe we're being threatened. By a pig? Not a chance, Starsky. Not a chance. Saturday night catches our fellas at the Star Casino. Not that they had any gambling in mind. Hey, Tammy, what time are you quitting tonight? 10.30. You sticking around? 
This just in. Carlton Breezy is today been denied bail on charges. There's our man, robbery. Hutch. The 43-year-old Breezy? Last week at there sure have been a lot of people asking about him recently. I heard a rumor he had bread tied up in this place. Let's hope someone's keeping it safe for him, huh, partner? I tell you, Hutch, they gotta pull this pitcher. He couldn't throw a strike if his life depended on it. Be nice if they had before the home run. Think we should worry about the pig's threats? The pig? He's history. Let's watch the game. Sodas, peanuts, popcorn, red hots! Hey, hot dog here. Want one, Hutch? No, thanks. I've had enough pork for one day. So the slime ball Kylie decides to get a few of his old friends together for a little reunion. He's been planning this party for a long time, the kind where people get killed. Trouble is, some of Kylie's boys are on vacation as guests of the city. Quiet, pig. If you want to see your family again. But these guests decide to check out the hard way. Oh yeah, the bus ride is over for those jailbirds. But some of them managed to fly the nest. We're out, boss. What's next? Excellent. Just stay low. I'll be in touch. Now that his compadres are on the loose, Bay City is about to learn just what Kevin Kiley had up his slimy sleeve. The captain calls Starsky and Hutch in for an urgent briefing. We've had a tip-off from the FBI that a gang are trading guns and explosives downtown. I want the Perrier to check out the parking lot on Montrose and keep your eyes peeled. We're on it, Captain. So the guys went real quiet like to the parking lot, looking for anyone selling illegal guns. Starsky and Hutch rounded up those loose cannons. And in the trunk, they find a whole lot of rifles, but not just any kind. Hey, look at this. Boxes had a name. Kylie Imports splashed all over them. Kylie Imports. Kylie? That name rings a bell. There was no time to investigate now. Things were about to take a real wide turn for the worse. Down at the docks, Kylie was hatching his next piece of action. He needs some real hot wheels for his little plane. And he wants the fastest finger. Get me some cars, make them fast ones, and make it quick. Hey, Hutch. Coming to the ball game? Yeah, just give me a minute. Hey! That's my car! What the heck? Come on, let's use mine. Seems like Kylie's boys wanted the best wheels in Bay City. And there were no exceptions with ZB3. Starsky and Hutch caught the speed freak, but he wasn't in the mood for talking. What's with taking my car, creep? Hutch cuffed the suspect while Starsky looked at the damage to Zebra 3. Then Hutch noticed something in the guy's pocket. Hey, Starsk, look at this. It's a map of Central with some kind of route. So, this is where you've been stealing cars, huh? The creep wasn't giving anything away about the map. So Hutch decides to take him back to the precinct for more questions. The next morning, the captain called our guys into his office. Hutch showed him the map, and he seemed to know what it was all about. That's the Senator's parade route. Those guns from the car park, sharpshooters' rifles, and what's more, that prison breakout, professional hitman. There was only one conclusion to draw from all this. Someone was fixing to assassinate Senator Richards. The captain needed Bay City's finest out there, but Zebra 3 was out of action so they had to use the only set of wheels the motor pool had left. You gotta be kidding, right? <laughs> yeah, looks like the boys have to go undercover. On the bread run. So Bay City's finest get congrats from the senator. The guys have saved the day. But the fat lady wasn't singing. There was still the question of who was behind the attempt on Senator Richard's life. Yeah, but who would want Senator Richards dead? I can think of quite a few guys in Bay City Penitentiary who might be interested. Starsky remembered the fact that the boxes of rifles were from Kylie Imports, and wondered if there could be some connection with John Kylie, the dude Senator Richards sent down for life last summer. But hunches alone ain't enough. They needed more. 
and they wouldn't have to wait long. Meanwhile, Kylie gets the word that his plan has failed. Senator Richards was saved today by the Bay City Police, who foiled an assassination attempt at today's parade. Now he needs a little smokescreen so he can make his escape. We need to keep the cops busy. Drop a few of these babies around town. Looks like Kylie's dudes are delivering trouble all over Bay City. Looks like the bomber got one of his own special deliveries. <laughs> Made quite a mess at that. And when they get to messing up my streets, yours truly wants to know about it. Fellas, what's all the noise? Don't you see I'm trying to do some business here? Hey, Huggy. Don't suppose you know who would want to blow up Bay City, do ya? Happen I do. The word on the street is, it's the same cat who hates the senator, some dude called Kylie. Starsky, you didn't hear that from me. You were right, Starsky. Let's find that creep. The rats at Dockside were getting ready to abandon ship. Come on, move it. Let's go. There's a whole lot of guns being loaded into that truck. Meanwhile, our guys needed some help to close the net. Control, you got an address for an outfit called Kylie Imports? Zebra 3, Kylie Imports are at 123 Keyside. Time for our team to finally catch up with Kylie and his little scheme. What a way to go, Starsk. Yeah, well, it's only what he deserved. I guess that wraps things up, huh, partner? Yep. Let's get back to the precinct. It's summertime in Bay City, and the folks are getting all ready for the annual parade. And this year, the special guest is our new lady senator. The senator knows all there is about crime in Bay City. She used to be the DA, and one of the toughest ones around. She put away a certain Kevin Kiley's brother on a life sentence, and he ain't one to forget. Now's the time for revenge, lady senator, and it's gonna be sweet. Real sweet. The senator heard about old Kylie's demise and gave our guys a little thank you. So, commendations, huh? Well, I guess it's deserved. How about we deserve some R&R too? What do you say, Captain? It's been a while, you know. All right, two days, and then I want the pair of you back. Now get out of here. Shh, quiet. Did you hear something? Surprise! Hey, how'd all you get in here? <laughs> we thought we couldn't let your good news go by without a celebration. Oh, the gang's all here. Come on, guys. Let's party! <laughs> <laughs>